Hey guys, Ian here, and on the Freedom Friday Mastermind, we have the one and only Lisa Copeland. She is gonna blow your mind, especially you women out there. She is definitely one of those boss babes in business. She is here to help you guys out, share her wins, share her story, and she was also critical. Her and Haas Pratt were the ones that brought on Grant and Elena Cardone to EXP Realty. They have some big, hairy, audacious goals. So I hope you enjoy this interview. Hit that like button, drop a comment, and share this with your team members. Uh, we have an amazing special guest today that's not even in our revenue show organization that has um, a willing to uh, uh, spend 45 minutes to one hour of her time to share and motivate every single one of you guys. And ladies, listen up. This is for you guys. I know we have a lot of male speakers a lot, um, but uh, this um, this powerful woman is definitely going to inspire all of us, especially a lot of the ladies too, right? And so that's what uh, uh, she's known for. And uh, her story is amazing. Uh, but let me just kind of kick it off here again real quick. And Ian, thanks so much for, uh, uh, for everything. Congrats on your success. Uh, so about Lisa, uh, we do more than real estate. We change communities, one neighborhood, one city, one state, one country at a time. Selling houses and additional service we offer. We are breaking down walls, changing minds about people, and creating more millionaire women and men than any other company on the planet. Generational wealth for all that are willing to work, pay it forward, and believe anything is possible. It's more than a job. It's a mission. Lisa Copeland's. Without further ado, Lisa Copeland, take yourself on mute. Welcome to the call. How are you doing? Good morning. How are you? I am doing fantastic. Well, thank you so much. I know you're crazy busy. And, uh, you know, I reached out to you, gosh, probably a month, two months ago to get on your calendar because I wanted to sneak you in before the end of the year uh, to, uh, you know, to motivate everybody, right? I, I've heard a lot of great things about you. I know you're really good friends with uh, my good friend, Brian Colhane, of course, the, the co-founder of EXP. And You've done some amazing things to grow um, EXP, and you've got amazing contacts. And I don't want to spill the beans because I want you to kind of share how big your, uh, you know, your your Rolodex is, and what you've done, and the people that you've brought in, and the and the uh, the women that you rub, you know, shoulders and elbows with uh, to grow y'all's organizations and to motivate, right? And so we always have a you know special guest on the call, but I know you're absolutely crushing it with selling real estate and also with doing the agent attraction. And I see you all around. I see you traveling, having fun. So uh, we do this mastermind again, uh, you know, every single Friday. We've been doing it for several years now uh, to inspire everybody, to motivate all the agents. Uh, we use this as a tool for, uh, you know, the agents to invite their prospects, um, you know, to kind of share what we're doing, to feel the energy, uh, to hear other agents' testimonials. It's not just mine. It's not just Chris's. It's not just Ian's. You know, there's a lot of other successful agents on here. Uh, and we all have our own story, right? We all have our own story, how we got introduced to EXP, what we've been able to do. Some have been here longer than others, uh, but that's not the case. We just want to help everybody grow uh, and, uh, and serve everybody. And so I know you've got an amazing story and a lot of people don't really know who you are. There's a lot of new agents on here as well. But, um, you know, I know uh, uh, you're very passionate about uh, what you've done and passionate about helping not only women, but helping really everybody, right? Women and men, realtors. Uh, anybody in, in, in real estate uh, to help them grow and help them motivate uh, and help them, uh, you know, be successful. So let's take it all the way back. I've got a few, you know, I want to hear your story and, and uh, you know, we've got about, uh, you know, 45 minutes or so, but uh, I'll uh, uh, ask you a few questions for about 30, 35 minutes or so, then I'll open it up to the group and let them, uh, you know, ask you a question or two, and then uh, we'll close it at the top of the hour. So let's take it all the way back. I know you've got an amazing resume, but let's take it all the way back and share who Lisa Copeland is. Um, all the way back to where? <laughs> well, you, 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 <laughs> when you're yeah, old yeah. enough, you know. Yeah, well, just uh, you know, kind of where, wherever you kind of started your, uh, you know, your career. You know, uh, yeah. uh, maybe a few years before real estate, and then your real estate career, and then I'll segue into uh, the powerful people that you've, uh, you know, uh, introduced to this amazing company. Well, so just to give you all a snapshot, and, and I'll make it quick. So you know, I, I started my career, um, you know, God, thirty something years ago in the automotive industry. And, um, and then I left the automotive industry and, um, I started, I decided, you know, I, I had young kids at the time and I was like, I can't work these hours. I can't work weekends. So I got in the mortgage business. And after about a year being the production manager at North, a company called North American Mortgage. So if any of you guys have been around long enough, you knew who North American was. And, uh, I was the production manager. I did really well. And so I was like, God, I can start my own mortgage company. So 23 years ago, 
I started uh, our company that's still in business today, Austin Mortgage Associates, and I ran it for about 12 years. And any of you who have got a mortgage background, it was like, I, I'd had enough. Like I, I did it, I checked the boxes, my husband runs it today. Um, but I was given the opportunity by my former boss in the car business, because he had watched my career in mortgages to relaunch, crazy, you can't make this up, to relaunch <laughs> Fiat and Alfa Romeo back to America. And so um, I was the first dealer principal and, and female in the network also, uh, the first dealer um, to launch Fiat and Alpha back to America. And so and it was crazy because when, when we decided to do it, I decided to do it in a shopping center in, in, in Austin called The Domain, because at that point, we didn't know what the volume would look like. I didn't want to get into a $40 million facility, literally. Uh, I ended up doing that later. Um, but I did not want to get into a $40 million facility. And so one of my favorite stories about Fiat was, is that I got a visit about six months after we were open by a team from Mr. Elon Musk. And uh, they wanted to know, you know, they saw our success and they uh, went in across the street from me at the mall, literally about six months later. So thanks, Elon. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but I'm still obsessed with him today, so that's okay. And then, um, so uh, I had a, I had an almost all female team. I wanted to revolutionize the auto industry, so I hired women, minorities, and millennials to show the white cowboys in Texas, because I'm from Texas, um, that that anybody could succeed in the automotive industry. What I loved about the automotive industry, and then I've come to love about real estate, is that you don't have to have a, a, an alphabet behind your name, right? You don't have to have a certain education. You just have to have a heart to serve people. And, and, and you'll, and you'll hear me thread that through the story. When you have a heart to serve people and to do the right thing, no matter who's watching, right? It doesn't matter who's watching, you do the right thing. Um, you will always be successful. So my team broke the world sales record. That kind of was, that's kind of what put me on the maps in the automotive industry is that I had made a bet with the chairman of the board of Ferrari, Maserati, Alfa Romeo, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram. It was one man. His name was Marchione, Sergio Marchione. And if you guys watch Ford versus Ferrari, you'll, you'll, you'll hear them talk about Marchione. So Marchione and I made a bet because Fiat was, he was an Italian and he, Fiat was his brand. That was his baby. And so Fiat bought the Chrysler Corporation and bought Chrysler out of bankruptcy. So I was on Marchione's, um, I was on Marchione's uh, radar screen, even though he was the global leader of this mass corporation because Fiat was his love. And I was the top Fiat dealer in the country. So made a bet with him that we break a world sales record. And once that happened, he came to see us. Um, crazy story. He put me on the board. I went on a crazy, um, uh, um, what am I trying to say? Um, like television tour. Like I did all the, you know, all the news stations and it was nuts. Like traveled all around the country. It was great. Awesome. Um, and then in 2016, I made the decision to sell my dealership. And, and why I get to this story is because guys, I fell into real estate by accident. So I, I sell my dealership in 2016. I write a couple books. I go out on a speaking tour. I did a television show in Canada called Car Sharks. And it was, it was uh, produced by Kevin O'Leary. So it was, yeah. yeah, so it was the, um, so I was the only female car dealer. Like there's always a thread for me. I was the female <laughs> car dealer. I was, I was kind of the lead person on the show. There was four guy car dealers and people tried to sell us their cars. So we were filming in Toronto in February. I'm like, I don't want to be a reality TV star. I don't even want to film in February in a, in a, in a building in Toronto, you guys. And every time I would, I would go through Canadian, um, I would go through Canadian uh, customs and they would hold me because there's rules, there's laws, anyways, doesn't even matter. They would hold me, the production company would have to come get me out. Like it was nuts. Wow. And so anyways, I decided I did not want to do that. So I have an agent in New York and I went on speaking tours and I spoke a lot. And my, who hires me to speak typically are fortune fives, fortune fives and fortune ones. And that's how to help sales teams get unstuck. So that's, you know, so that was really going to be the rest of my career. The rest of my life is that I worked and consulted for, spoke for fortune ones, fortune fives and why them? Because they had the budget to pay me um, and to help their sales teams get unstuck because I do believe it's mindset. So that's great. We're clicking along biggest year of my life coming into 2020 and then COVID hits. And uh, literally, I, I, I got pulled off of a stage in Chicago. I was closing keynote for a, uh, a moving company, Atlas Moving. It was their mm -hmm. global conference. And the meeting planner, when I was done speaking, I was supposed to stay overnight. And then I was going to meet with their people because I put together a big proposal. And um, the meeting planner is like, we're flying you home tonight. I'm like, why? And she goes, because Chicago is going to be shut down in the morning. I'm like, for what? Like, I'm from Texas. Like, we didn't even heard of, we didn't even, I don't know that we even believed in the coronavirus, but number two, we yeah. I mean, this is <laughs> not right. a thing. 
right? I'm like, what are we doing here? And so literally the only time, Pat, that I was scared during the pandemic was when I got to Chicago O'Hare that night and everybody was masked and gloved and like almost in hazmat suits. And I had nothing. And I called my husband. I'm like, I have walked into the walking dead here. I'm like, I'm like, I just hope I get home. Like it was so crazy y'all. Wow. And then, so I fly out of Chicago O'Hare, I get back into Austin, ABIA, and I'm like, okay, okay, the world is normal again, because <laughs> nobody yeah. was passed up in, in ABIA. So anyways, so that, within days, my agent called me, we're canceled, we're canceled, we're canceled. So anyways, I started thinking to myself, what, what is it I can do, right? What is it I can do that, and again, not as much the money part, is that I'm not going to sit in the house. I'm not, I'm, I'm not buying into this. Like, I'm not sitting home and waiting for the apocalypse. I've got to be out. I've got to be amongst people. So i have been thinking about it for a while, because again, remember, I own a mortgage company. I'm a big real estate investor. And so I was like, I'm just going to get a real estate license. I literally got it. It was like in, in two weeks, passed the test. And, um, and so I was thinking about what am I going to do with it? So here's, so here's somebody you all know that is one of my very best friends on planet earth yep. is Haas Pratt. Yep. And Haas and I met because we had the same agent out of New York because he was a speaker, I'm a speaker and blah, blah, blah. And so our, our agent introduced us like two or three years ago. And literally my agent, cause they're out of New York, right? My agent was like, I'm not trying to offend the New Yorkers, by the way, the Chicago people, you can just tell them from Texas. So my, the agent in New York says, oh, you two have to meet each other. And I'm like, why, why do I need to meet this guy? And he goes, because he's from Texas and his name is Haas. So he, I'm like, okay, cool. But yeah. Haas and I meet, we just like hit it off immediately, of course. And for those of you who know Haas, you cannot help but love Haas Pratt. Yes, love him. Yep. I, yeah, I was Green, Green, yeah, I was in Greenville, South Carolina speaking with him last week. Oh, good. You were at, Katie, um, at Katie's deal. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yep. I heard it's crazy successful. Katie's in my downline. Awesome. Okay. Katie's in yep. my downline. So I'm very happy about that. Yeah. Um, so anyways, I loved Haas, but I hadn't talked to him probably in a year, year and a half. And guys, as the universe would have it, however you want to believe, I believe it was God. I get an email and it was like a, a blanket email, right? So like, so number one, like work your email list and it's, it's from Haas Pratt. And he's like, you know, like, like, has the pandemic gotten you down? Or da, 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 da. And he had just gotten to EXP. I say just, he, he, he'd already brought in Tarek Al Musa. So he'd probably been there less than a year. You know, has the pandemic gotten you down? What are you going to do? Blah, 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 blah. And I never read these emails, y'all. Never. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so I happened to read this one because why? I was home. And um, and I read it and I pick up the phone and I'm like, Haas Pratt, Lisa Copeland, what are you up to? And he's like, girl, how are you? And I said, good. I said, how's your speaking business? He's like, oh, you know. And he goes, and literally, y'all, you ask him this story. He literally says to me, he goes, do you have a real estate license? I go, actually, I do. I just got it. I just passed. He's like, you need to get to Dallas. <laughs> and yes. so, and so, I, so I'm, I'm not in Austin. I don't claim Austin. I'm, I'm 40 miles north. In, in, um, I lived in Williamson County and now I live in Bell County for those of you in Central Texas. So anyways, I y'all, I literally printed the email, okay? Because they were saying, oh, we're closing down I-35. And if you're not a central worker, then we can arrest. Like all this crazy stuff, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And so, and so real estate was essential, right? And my husband was going to the office every day because he was in mortgages and that's essential, thank God, because I could not have lived with my husband like, you know, in the house every day, all day. Yeah. And so that probably saved our 34 year marriage. Um, <laughs> so anyways, y'all, I literally printed the email I got in my car the next day. I drove to Dallas. I get to the front of the building and please don't let me offend anybody, but literally Haas goes, you're not going to wear a mask. Are you I'm like, no. <laughs> so like Haas and I just like, I just can't even tell you guys how much I love Haas Pratt. Like, yes. and, and I really credit him with, if you guys know Haas, he's one of the most tenacious people you ever want to meet. And he's bold, right? He's bold in everything he does. And so you either love Haas or you hate him probably a lot like me, right? Either, either I am your cup of tea or I'm, your, I'm not. And so anyways, he, um, he, he and I sit down and he's like, well, do you know who Tarek El Moussa is? And I'm like, yeah, of course. And he's like, well, you know, you know, we want to build the largest real estate team, um, on the planet. And he goes, he goes, I just brought in Tarek and maybe Tarek had been on the team maybe for a month. And I'm like, all right, sounds good to me. And, um, and, and so, you know, I didn't even know anything about EXP. So take this down too. you know, you attract the way that you were attracted. Okay. I didn't sign up because of EXP, y'all. I, I, I didn't know about stock. I didn't know about rev share. I didn't know about anything. I didn't care what the split was. I didn't care what the cap was. I didn't care. You know what I wanted to do? I wanted to work with Haas Pratt. Yep. I loved the guy. Uh, I had massive respect for Haas. I'd heard great things about him through my agent, but I'd also talked to him over the years. So you attract the way you were attracted. 
I didn't care about the details. I wanted to work with Haas and Tarek, loved Tarek, got him on the phone. He was great. Um, and I was like, Haas, I'm in. Literally, Haas pulls out the iPad or however we did it. And I'm like, boom, boom, boom. And, yep. and I did, I, and I, I had parked my license at a local brokerage, by the way. I didn't, I left that part out. I'd been there a month. I called, sold a couple houses. No big deal. And yep. I literally, boom, signed up that day. So, you know, don't get into the weeds, y'all. Do not get into the weeds because at the end of the day, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And my good friend Grant Cardone says, though, if they don't know you, they can't like you and they can't trust you. So you have to get known first, right? So yes. Haas was a known entity to me. I trusted him. Haas could have told me to go to Remax with him or Keller. It wouldn't have mattered. I would have gone with Haas. So right. be really careful. And this is what I tell my team is don't get so tight in the weeds of, well, your cap is this and you're split. Blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. Y'all, if you get the meeting, they're there to do business with you and you've got to sell you. So there's that. Um, so that day, powerful, powerful. That's powerful. I love that story. It's so true. Like, again, I, I didn't even know the company I signed up for. I literally yep. called Haas on the way home. Y'all can ask him like Haas, what company as I was telling my husband about it, like on the call. Yeah. On the way home, what, did like, I just, Haas, what did I just sign up for? Yeah. I'm like, what, what is the company that I, I just, I'm putting my license with? He's like, Oh, <laughs> EXP. I'm like, okay, cool. EXP. Oh, that is but, awesome. But at that meeting, right. So my friend Haas is a huge manifester. And um, like, I'm just better for knowing him guys. And just, you know, if you don't follow Haas Pratt, you need to. Um, so he says to me, because remember I was a car dealer all those years, very high profile. And he says, Hey, do you know Grant Cardone? And I go, yeah, I go, I go, Grant, Grant Cardone's a good friend of mine. And he's like, no, like, do you really know Grant Cardone? I'm like, I really do. Here's his cell phone number. I can call yeah. him right now if you want to. And, um, and Grant and I, you know, so, so Grant used to call on me personally at my dealership guys back in 2012, Grant moseyed into my dealership, got past my gatekeeper and we had a three hour meeting. This was in 2012. Okay. And, and, and we kept up with each other. And then he and I ended up on a lot of stages together in the auto industry, NADA, some of the big national conventions, we were both keynote speakers. So we had always kept up with each other, but we weren't like, Hey, talking every day, kind of friends. And, um, anyways, and I said, yeah, yeah, I know Cardone. And he goes, why don't we manifest right now, right now, you and me, let's make a decision that we're going to bring the Cardones to EXP. And I said, okay, let's do that. Okay. So that was number one, right? We put our intention into the universe. Y'all, I didn't even know what company I had signed up for, but yep. what I knew was, is that I knew Grant Cardone. Number two, he said, he said, okay, the other person we have to manifest is Matt. Uh, what's his name? The, the mattress guy. Um, Mike, Michael, Mike, the mattress guy, you know, uh, you know, Mike, Mike, oh, oh. Lindell, Mike Lindell, because Haas had just read his book and he has a real estate license. I'm like, okay, then like, why don't we manifest him also? <laughs> He's a little more controversial nowadays, probably than, uh, than Cardone is. But, um, but anyways, so we're like, okay, so y'all, I literally walked out of that meeting, did not know who I signed up with, but I signed up with Haas and that's all I cared about. I wanted to work with Haas. I loved his vision. I manifested that we would bring Cardone's over, which most of you know, we did. Yep. And, um, and, and we made a decision to build the biggest team on the planet. We have not done that yet. We, we, we have not gotten bigger than Pat Hayes. But at the end of the day, if you don't put that to the universe, if you don't set your intentions and an execution plan, you will never get there. You'll never get there. And so, you know, Haas told me from day one, and I believe this, and I, I, I preach this to my team, is that you recruit the way that you were recruited, yep. you know? And so Absolutely. I never lead with, hey, you want to come to EXP Realty? No, right. EXP is a great vehicle. I love it. I've, I've, I've been here two and a half years, but I lead with, hey, you want to work with me? Yes, that's powerful. And that's, guys, yeah, so true. And I say that all the time too. The way that you were recruited, you're going to recruit that way, right? That's just how it is. Yeah. You know, I got that life-changing phone call seven years ago from, from Scott Lewis. And now he's one of my biggest mentors and one of my biggest coaches. And, you know, he changed my life. He changed my life. I mean, I mean, I, I, I feel like Haas changed my life, but you know, but a couple of things that I will tell y'all too, uh, you guys, I'm bad about putting in nuggets, but there's such important pieces to my yeah. story. Number one, I agreed to take the meeting in 2012 with Grant Cardone. Grant had literally, and, and Grant and I talk about this all the time publicly on Clubhouse and, and, and you know, at, I, I'm a speaker at 10X Ladies, like I tell the story and, and it's an important story. You know, that, that I agreed that I agreed to take the meeting with with Cardone back in 2012 when he was just a vendor 
he was a millionaire, but he was a sales trainer, right? And most of the time I didn't take meetings, but I was like, you know, the guy came all the way in from Florida, wanted to meet me, like, you know, flew in on Southwest or American, not on the, not on the Gulf Stream. And yeah. I thought, you know what, you know, he looks good. You know, he's dressed nice. He's prepared. I'm going to take this meeting. So number one, take the meetings, y'all, because you never know 10 years later how that person can change your life. Okay. So that's number one, take the meeting. Number two, answer the call. You know, see, see uh, every piece of my success, whether it was in the automotive industry, real estate, mortgage, whatever it was, it's because I've showed up. It isn't because I'm smarter. It's not because I'm cooler. It's not because I'm rich. Nothing. It's because I've showed up. I've taken the time to take the meeting, make the meeting, um, you know, and, and, and you have to sit through a lot of meetings to have the meeting where, you know, I mean, I could have told my agent no back in 2000. When did I meet Haas? Uh, 2016. I could have told my agent, no, I'm not going to talk to that guy from Texas. Why, why, why do I need to talk to a guy named Haas Pratt? He's in real estate. I'm not in real estate. Right. I don't need to talk to him. But my agent's like, oh, you'll love him. His name is Haas and he's from Texas. <laughs> yes. I was like, okay, I'll take the meeting. But I believe that the two meetings I took have, have put me to where I am today in life. And that was Grant Cardone and, and Haas Pratt. So, so take the meeting, be open, show up, like show up well. I have a friend who wrote a book about that, but show up well every day. Show up yes. with intentions, right? No, I love it. I love it. Now, speaking of books real quick, I'll let you take a breath. Uh, so speaking of books, you know, Haas Pratt, you know, I was there in, in Greenville with them. And, and uh, you know, I, I bought his books for all my team, you know, listing boss. Yeah. Um, I think everybody needs to read that, guys. Um, you know, go. Mm -hmm. Go to Amazon and go buy it. Listing Boss by Haas Pratt. You need to go buy it. And, um, you know, so let's kind of, let, let's shift a little bit about, um, um, you know, I know there's a lot of agents on here that um, are looking to grow their business. Um, you know, there's a lot of coaches out there. You know, of course, you know, Haas is a great coach about, um, you know, how to take more listings, you know, never work with buyers, how to take more listings. Um, maybe share with, uh, you know, some of these agents, you know, of course, we've got newer agents on here. We've got seasoned agents. We've got agents um, that, uh, you know, strictly just do some agent attraction, but are looking to get into you know, selling more houses, uh, you know, on the side as well. Um, maybe share a few nuggets, how to be a successful agent in selling deals in this type of market. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it goes back to Pat. Number one, you have to show up all the time. And uh, I mean, I'm here in Scottsdale at Sharon Lecter's house and she had uh, her team over and several people from the other side of my team. And we had about 50 agents here the other night and Tom Hopkins was here because Tom Hopkins is a good friend of hers. So I, I mean, we were just absolutely in the, um, in the presence of, of royalty, right. Between yes. Sharon who wrote rich dad, poor dad, and then Tom Hopkins who holds the Guinness book of world records, by the way, of selling 365 houses in one year. And, you know, and, and so, you know, when, when you sit there in amongst greatness, right. People that have really made it, you know, you know, and then she had me come up and speak like, what's the tip? Lots of new agents there. And I said, guys, you have to have more conversations. Okay. You know, we didn't have to have a lot of conversations in 2021 and 2022. Didn't have to. People come up to you. I want to buy a house. And here's an important part about this. And, and I, any of you follow my Monday night trainings, the last two years, rates have been on sale. Okay. The interest rate's been on sale. Okay. Yay. But this year, 2023, and these are part of your conversations, the assets on sale. And when I say asset, that's the property, whether it's commercial land, um, residential, doesn't matter, the assets on sale. And so Monday at 10 o'clock, um, I've got my team coming to a uh, 10 o'clock central, and you guys are all welcome, uh, coming to a call that I'm going to show them how to pencil on one piece of paper, how the asset being on sale is much more powerful than the money on sale. Meaning if you can buy a property for 25, 50, $100,000 less, today than you could have nine months ago, you are better off making that acquisition today than you were nine months ago when you were in multiple offers and paying way too much for the asset, right? But why that's important and why I want my team and, and anybody else who wants to join, y'all are invited. Why, I, why it's so important is because we have to have more conversations and we have to break it down for people. I mean, my God, if you get on CBS, NBC, any of them, I mean, it's like the world's coming to an end. Everything's going to foreclose. I'm like, no, it's not. The assets are on sale. Yeah. Right. So not only do you have to control the narrative, but you have to create the narrative. And that's what I do. I create a lot of narrative and there are people that have unfollowed me because of it, but I don't care. <laughs> I believe I'm right in that. Yes. I love that. Now, okay. Can you share with the group? Um, how do we attend that call? Cause I would love to, I would love to attend it and uh, would love to uh, help you uh, uh, market and promote it as well too. Yeah, um, Pat, I will send you the Zoom link for it. And okay. um, and this is, it's a special call I'm doing on Monday at 10 Central. Because when I had my my team call yesterday, and I was just, you guys see, I talk fast and I go fast and whatever. And so they were like, oh my God, Lisa, but we need to know how to break it down. I'm like, y'all, I will break down a deal for you 
where you can put it on one piece of paper, on a half a piece of paper, and you are going to take that and you're going to do that on every single conversation you have so that we can show people that making the acquisition, see money's made on, on commodities, real estate and cars. And I knew this from being a car dealer. I used to tell my used car manager, the money's made at acquisition. Do not go out and pay too much for a car at the right. auction or from a, from a seller or anything. Our money's made at acquisition. We have got to acquire the asset at the right price or, 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 or I don't care how great it is. It, you, we will never make the profit margins that we need to make. Guys, it's the same with the house. It's all it about is. acquisition. Okay. Because that acquisition price, that lower, that lower price is going to determine the amount of profit margin they make in three years, five years, or 10 years when they sell it. And it's never going to be more important. It's more important now than ever when it comes to investors, which is where I play a lot in is that investor space. So, you know, and so, and, but, but I have to sit down with seasoned investors and they're like, oh, the NOI, which is, you know, net operating income or this and that. And I'm like, guys, it doesn't matter. The assets on sale, I can show you 19 different money hacks on, on, on how to reduce that rate and get it reduced because I believe that we're one president, one pandemic or one war away from lower rates. And, and it's the truth. And so yeah. you know, the rates are not forever. They're just not forever. But the, but the, the acquisition price of the asset, that is forever. So, so that is where you need right. to make the smartest decision. And so anyways, Pat, I will send you the link and y'all are okay. my because sure. I, yeah 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 if you don't mind yeah uh, you know i'd love to you know just share it with uh, you know with the group and um, you know if they're if they're able to hop on we'd love to hop on and you know just hear nuggets from you because i i hear that uh, you know you're an amazing speaker amazing presenter and you've got a wealth of knowledge and so you know kind of want to put all of our heads together and uh, you know help everybody yeah. out love it for sure so now okay so i've got a few more questions here and then i'll open it up uh, you know for the group uh so they can ask you a few questions so um, what is your take on what is next year going to look like for you? Or what do you think? How is the market going to be in 2023? Um, you know, everybody's kind of got their own opinions. You know, I know you're very savvy uh, on the mortgage side and on the real estate side. Um, mm -hmm. You've got, uh, you, know, uh, you know, access to a lot of, uh, uh, you know, big um, uh, influencers as the Cardones and all that good stuff. What is your take on, uh, on, on what this economy is going to be like? What's the real estate industry going to be like next year for us? You know, I, I, I think we're just going to see, you know, I think it depends on what market you're in, but I really think we're going to kind of go back to pre-pandemic levels. And, those, and, and that is really a good word, y'all, for you to use with your sellers when they're like, but I could have gotten this much nine months ago. And, and you have to understand what the perfect storm was, right? Yeah. No builders, no building, no supply, you know, no sellers. And then everyone leaving California, New York, the blue states to hit the red states, to hit Texas, Florida, you know. Right. And so and so what happened was, is that we got inundated with buyers. Sellers were afraid. The builders quit building and boom, all of a sudden you have fake inflation. I mean, fake, listen to me, fake equity, right? Boom, boom, boom. Yep. So it's, you know, so what I think we'll see, I, um, I, I think that you're going to have to change the narrative, y'all, with your SOI, your sphere of influence. You've got to be out, and I do it. You got to be out every day on your social media because those that, those are the most important people in your world. Like you cannot boil the ocean, okay? You know, in, unless in, unless I can get back to Fox News, which I, I did used, used to do a lot of stuff with them in the car business. Unless I can get out and broadcast to millions of people, the most important people I can talk to are my Facebook, my Instagram, my Twitter, LinkedIn, um, because th those are people that follow me already, right? And so I am going to create and control the narrative. So. I think that if, if you're willing to have more conversations and you come out of the gate as an authority, you know, whether I'm right or wrong, I believe I'm right. And whether you're right or wrong, you've got to believe you're right. And then, and then you've got to be not afraid to, put, to, to tell your sphere of influence that story. And you have to tell it more than one time. You've got to tell it and tell it and find more creative ways of telling it. You need to interview your clients. You need to interview experts. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring on a 1031 guy. I'm bringing on someone about redirecting IRAs. You know, this is all investment stuff. Yes. Um, and so I think that's a big thing. You know, I, I filmed with Grant uh, about a month ago. He, he brought his show Real Estate King to Austin. And so I was one of the contestants. And so I made the decision that day. I joined the real estate club and he wasn't trying to sell it to me, but I joined his real estate club. Why? Because I want to play bigger in 2023. I'm not yes, sure. That I saw that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I saw y'all's pictures on Facebook. That was awesome. Tell yeah, us a little bit about that. Yeah. Tell, yeah. Yeah. No, it just, it just, you got to make a decision to play bigger because here, here's what the great thing is going to be. You know, a lot of these investors bought these investment properties over the last two or three years and they put them on three-year arms. 
So now they've got to they've got to re uh, re amortize and they're going to have to refinance or whatever at these higher rates. So a lot of these yeah. investors are going to dump the asset. Just know that they're going to dump the asset because remember assets are on sale now. They're going to dump that asset and 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 they're going to buy one on sale. And so you know there's you know there, there's going to be a lot of movement within those um, within those segments. So looking at multifamily, looking at um, you know I mean even even people who own single family. I've absolutely put a war on single family investors. I'm like, you're dumb. You're dumb. Like, you know, and, and giving them examples of why it's dumb. And so, you know, and it's not popular sometimes, but, but, you know, but if you want to be wildly successful in business and I don't care what business you're in, you know, you've got to be willing to take a stand. You've got to stand by it. You have to know you're going to lose a few people along the way, but the ones that love you will become your raving fans and they will do business with you. Amen. Love it. That's so powerful. So true, guys. Hopefully you guys are taking notes. This is a powerful call. All right, so I've got one last question here and we'll open it up. Definitely respect everybody's time here before leadership meeting at um, the top of the hour at 10 o'clock. So um, I know you 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 love self-development. Um, you know, Haas Pratt's got an amazing book. What are some of the books that um, are some of your favorites or some of the books that you're currently reading right now? Oh, great question. Um, <laughs> the book I'm reading right now that I'm obsessed with is Breaking History by Jared Kushner. So anyways, I won't go down that road. Um, you know, my dear friend, Sharon Lecter, um, you know, she uh, she annotated and edited the great Napoleon Hill, uh, Outwitting the Devil. If you all have not listened to Outwitting the Devil, I'm telling you, Napoleon Hill was prophetic. You've got, it's, it's, and I've talked to Sharon about it. And, um, you know, so I love Outwitting the Devil. You know, I, I, I read Grant's books. I've always read Grant's book, you know, Seller Be Sold, really good, 10X. Sharon's yeah. got another really good book, which... Oh, it's under here. I'm not gonna pull it out. It's called Exit Rich. You know, how do you exit rich? Um, you know, so I like to read the books of the yeah. people that I know because, yeah, because I, read, I yeah. know that they're subject matter experts, right? Elena's book, How to Build an Empire. Um, you know, I mean, and guys, like if you were to look at my Audible account, I have got 140 books in my Audible account. I don't listen to podcasts. I don't do a lot of TV. I just listen to books. And, 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 and I listen to the great thought leaders who have done it bigger than I have. Like, don't ever follow somebody who hasn't done more than you've done. Yeah. Like, Amen. why would you do that? It's a big mistake. That's great. Mm -hmm. Great. Love it. Love it. All right, guys, let's open it up here for you guys. Who's got a question for Lisa? Don't be afraid. This is your time. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. In the absence of courage, do it scared. She's a wealth of knowledge, guys. This is your time. I'm done with my questions. Lisa, what's been the largest challenge for you with real estate? Because it's in a lot of ways like the car business because it's people, but there's difference, different differences. Tell me what your challenge has been. To, um, we all have a brick wall. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think, I've, you know, this year um, I've had some just disappointments and, and, and it's never been in the deals. Right? You know, deals are deals. They fall apart. It just happens. I don't care who you are. You know, um, it's been in people and it has been people that, that, have, that have quit too soon. That, that have left my organization um, and not told me, like, I'm just being real with you guys. Like I, yeah. I, I'll get, you know, I'll, I'll go look at my rev share and I'm like, and I'll go look and I'm like, what do you mean that person left? And I'll reach out to him. Well, you know, I decided to do this and this. And, you know, I'm like, wow, you can even have a conversation with me. Like, you know, so I think that's, that's been, you know, managing a big team. I've got about 900 on my team. So I'm smaller compared to a lot of you guys and gals on this, on this uh, call. Well, that's, that's still great. Congratulations to you. That's great. Thank you. But, you know, and, and so, you know, I really do try to keep up and I, I try to look at it and, you know, and, and, and just seeing people quit. You know, I, I think that's a change. I used to see it in the car business, like people that were had great potential, but when things got tough, they quit. Yeah. And, yeah. and I just, I don't get it. And, and, and it isn't like they come to me and say, Hey, I'm, 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 I'm discouraged. I need help. You know, what do you think? No, they just quit. I hear so, you. It, ha hey, it happens to me too. You know, I, I, I get so upset and so frustrated. Like you, couldn't even pick up the phone call and say, Hey, I need some help. Of course I would, I would help you, but guys, of course, if, if you're stuck, you know, I, I need to know so I can help. Yeah. yeah. It's frustrating. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, you know, but you know, but here's, here's the problem with quitters y'all quitters always quit. I mean, you know, they're going to go to the next brokerage. They're going to quit again. Right. And so I think that they got, you know, you got to get your mind around, you know, that again, <laughs> this may be popular or not, you know, EXP is just a vehicle. You know, it's a great vehicle, but it's just a vehicle. And at the end of the day, you've got the greatest leaders in whatever leadership you're in with Pat and with this whole group. It's like, you're not going to get that anywhere else. You know, a, a brokerage is a brokerage. You know, we, we have a few more bells and whistles and that's amazing. But at the end of the day, like you're quitting the team, you're quitting yourself. 
Love it. Great answer. All right, guys, we've got time for just a few more questions here real quick, and we'll wrap it up. Who's got another question for Lisa? I see someone here has got their hand up. At, oh, at let's FT. see. Yeah, go ahead. Let's see here. FT? Is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, FT, uh, FT here from Chicago. Lisa. Hey, hey Chicago. I just wanted to <laughs> hey, how you doing? Pasty. I was in Austin a couple of weeks ago for a soccer tournament. Um, just wanted to find out from you, what is the secret of overcoming challenges? How do you sit down, you see in a challenge, do you have a routine for it? Do you break it down to like, okay, if I, if I face this adversity, this is how I'm going to approach it? Or is there any nuggets? You know, I don't know. I just, you know, I just, I just think life is a challenge, right? Everything we do is a challenge. And so I, I think a lot of it starts with your mindset. Like, you know, I mean, I don't think what I do is any different than what anybody else does. I just, I, I just don't quit. I mean, that's, that's probably the best thing I can tell y'all is I just don't quit. Have there been days that I'm like, oh, screw this. I don't want to do real estate anymore. Like there's other things I can go do. I can, cause now the, the world's open back up. I can get back up and speak and make a lot of money for doing this for one hour, right? And not have to mess with 900 people and stupid sellers and even dumber buyers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. You know, and I'm just like, but I can't, I can't do that. Like I made a decision to be successful. And and really, I look up to, like, I worry more about letting Haas down. Like if I ever quit, I'd be like, oh, God, like everything Haas has poured into me and what he's done and, and Tarek and like, right. And so um, you, just, you just have to decide not to quit. But I promise you, I have days that I'm like, there is an easier way to make a living than this. <laughs> Love it. Second question, if, if I may ask. Uh, sure. I'm listening to your story yeah. about how you became so successful as a car, a female car in the, all over the world. Is there something unique about the power of affirmation? Because you talked about I to trust at Las Vegas, and he said, he told me the story of how you guys have found that you're going to go get Oh no, he's cutting out. What is the power uh, yeah. of permission? Pat, can you read? Yes, yeah, say. Yeah, you're cutting out. Say it again. Yeah, real quick, Effie. Your question. I took that from you. What is the power of affirmation? It just like. Is there something special about affirming things that you want to do, or just keep it to yourself? Um. You know, I think I know how to answer this because I, I kind of caught half of it. You know, anytime I've made a decision to do something, I've made, I've been very public about it. So when I made the decision that my team was going to break the world sales record in automotive, I called automotive news because they, I was their darling. They loved me. So an automotive news is like the New York times of automotive. And I told the reporter, I'm like, Hey, I just made a bet with Mark Ioni that my team's going to break the world sales record. I got calls from all, it, all over the record, all over the country. They're like, have you lost your mind? Like you're, you, number one, you can't do it. Number two, you put it in automotive news. You're an idiot. And I was like, no, that's, that's my accountability. When I got to real estate, when I, I came on the team after my meeting with Haas, now I'd only sold two houses in my career at that point. Okay. My, my Facebook post was, I just met with Haas Pratt, Tarek El Moussa, and we're going to build the largest real estate team on the planet. I didn't even know how I was, I didn't know the company I was with when I left yeah. there, but I'd made the decision because I was bought into my two leaders that, and, and, and I committed to them that I would help them do that. And so I put it out publicly. So, so not to not to do it, then all of a sudden now I've failed. So I, I don't know if that answered it, but I'm going to tell y'all, if you've got a big audacious goal, I want you to post it. I want you to say, you know what? I am doing my 2023 planning and these, this is what I'm going to do in 2023. I'm going to bring on 15 agents to my team. I'm going to sell 15 houses in 2023. And, and, and I'm going to change people's lives. I'm going to serve my community. I'm going to serve my, my, my team. And, you know, make it public because if you don't, it's super easy to quit. Yep. Great. Thank you. Love Thank it. you, guys. Love it. I, and I like that story. You know, uh, um, you know, Haas Pratt um, uh, in his um, um, in his speeches, you know, he says he wrote himself a check for one hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's so powerful. And he made it happen. He didn't quit. He made it happen. He, uh, did. he wanted to be successful. Yes. I love that. All right, guys, we got time for about maybe one, uh, one or two more questions here. Hey, uh, Lisa, I got a question. Yeah, go ahead, John. Hey, so when you're at the uh, car dealership and all throughout your life, um, oh, sorry, probably can't hear me. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when when you were uh, you know in your career in the car dealership and other places, 
how did you hire the right people around you? So the people that work for you, the, the team that got you to where they are, how did you identify the right people? You know, I love that you asked that because I was so about revolutionizing the auto industry and doing things differently. And so I would interview every person. I didn't care if it was the janitor, the porter, the mechanic, the, uh, the general manager. I'd interview them, all of them. And one of the things I'd say, why, why do you want to be here? Because after we got kind of famous and on TV and like Bravo was after us to do a TV show and some other stuff, everyone wanted to work there because they thought, oh, this is so sexy. And it's not, trust me. It's like the highlight reel. And um, it's hard work. And so, and so what answer I would look for the person that, that said, oh, cause I am obsessed with cars. I love cars. Like I wasn't, I wasn't too hot for that person. Cause if you love cars, then you need to go work the Ford dealership or the shit. It didn't matter. But the people that said, I love people, I love to see what you're doing. Like you're revolutionized the auto industry. Like I love the fact that you're open to hiring women, millennials, minorities, you know, the, the gay and lesbian community. Like, I mean, Fiat's hello. Like, I mean, we sold all of ballet Austin. Like, you know, I, I you know, I believe that we had to be customer facing to the demographic of who is coming in our front door. And so, so when people would come into me and say, I love people, I wanna serve people. Like, like I wanna do what you do. I wanna revolutionize this. I, I wanna show that an African-American female can sell cars. I'm like, girl, you're hired. Like I wouldn't have cared if she was in prison. I would have hired her because yep. of, of the heart, right? So I think it's a heart issue, much more than a knowledge issue much more than a resume issue. There's people out there, y'all, with great resumes and they suck. Like yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have them on my team. I wouldn't hire them because they're not good people, you know, and they're all about them. And every single one of us who are here that are leaders, we've got to be more worried about that. You know, when our team is successful, we are successful. And so, okay. yeah. Love it. Thanks, Lisa. Hire good people. I mean, hire people that, that, that want to serve others, not themselves. Self-serving people just suck. Powerful. All right, guys, we've got time for about one more question here. Who's got the last question for Lisa of the mastermind today? Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Don't be scared, guys. This is we would, we would like the link for Monday. Yes. Oh, I'll, okay. I will send that to Pat. Yeah. Once, yeah, I'll get that and I'll send it out to you guys. Okay. Yep. All right. One more question here. Got a few more minutes here. We'll wrap it up. If not, I've got one. Oh, go ahead, Eric. Yep, go ahead. So when are you going to be at 5,000? I, I know it's easy for me to say, but I know you have goals like that. I do. You know, I do. And I, I to be honest, y'all, because I'm two and a half years into this, right? Uh, I think my anniversary with EXP, my three year is like in April or May. Um, and I really thought that I would have been there by now. And um, so, you know, I don't know about y'all, but I mean, we are losing people. Uh, the people we're losing are a lot of the non-producers, you know, they're yeah. doing something different. Right. So we're, we're, we're going backwards to go forwards and um, you know, but I have to set it out there. So my, my goal for the end of 2023 is to be at 2,500, right? Because, because I think, I think I'm going to lose probably 20%. So got to make that up, go forward and all of that. Um, but again, you know, I'm not about in the beginning, I was all about numbers. I want 10,000 people. Ugh. Okay. I'd rather have 2,500 great ones. Yes. Who are committed to sell a couple houses a year, who are committed to being better, to helping, um, to serving, you know, versus having 10,000 bodies right, or 5,000 bodies, because that was your question. You know, it, I think you agree with me. It really comes down to finding people like you that are willing to. Somebody last night uh, said, well, you know, people quit. And I'm like, what's that? You know, yeah. <laughs> how can you quit? Your dream. Yeah. Some people do. It's crazy. I don't understand why, but they do. You know, you know, Grant says, and I love it. He says, he says, you know, don't ever trust somebody. Don't ever listen to somebody who quit their dream, you know, or, or, or tell them about your dreams from somebody or don't ever, you know, take advice from who, who quit their own dream. Right. You know, and every one of you had a dream. And just like my team, everybody who came to EXP or to anywhere, got into real estate, we all had a dream of success. And I just, it amazes me how quick people give up on themselves and then hop to the next thing thinking that that's going to happen. But the day that's you quit right. on yourself, the day you quit, you, 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 you have quit everything you you've ever put into the universe. You know, you just have, and I, I just can't tell you guys how many blows I've taken, especially in the auto industry. Like Fiat was fix it again, Tony, right? It left us fix it again, Tony, the massive amount of butt kicking I took in the industry. Um, mm -hmm. 
relaunching Fiat to America and then making that crazy bet in automotive news and all this other stuff. But I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to let you guys steal my dream. I'm not going to let you steal my thunder. I'm just going to put my head down and I'm going to work. And, and if I fail, and there was many things I failed at, uh, if I fail, then that's on me, but it's not on you. You know, you know, you're not the one who, who, who made me fail or quit my dream. Cause I won't let you, I will block you out. You're dead to me. Yep. I mean, people, people that come after me to, to, to who tell me I'm crazy or whatever. I'm not kidding y'all. Like they're done. Yep. Love it. So, so, so you, you have to know how to, who to cut out of your life too. And sometimes so y'all it's family. My own mother said, oh, how can you sell real estate? Oh my God. Like they're blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, you can't cut out your mother. But now I just talked to her about anything but real estate. Yeah. Hey, there you go. I mm -hmm. love it. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, we're almost at the top of the hour. Lisa, that was so powerful and inspiring. <laughs> Hope you guys uh, definitely enjoyed it. I did. This is being recorded. Uh, well, we'll definitely get it out there. Whenever you can, Lisa, send me that link uh, to oh. the call. And if you don't mind, we'd like to hop on if we, you know, if everybody can, uh, depending on their schedules, though. But uh, everyone's wow. invited. Yes, love it. Amazing story. So powerful. Uh, you know, thanks for all the nuggets. Thanks for everything that you're doing. Uh, thanks for being you. And, uh, you know, I definitely uh, I would love to return the favor if I can ever be. A, I know, uh, Pat, you and I, aren't you? You're in San Antonio, right? Yeah, I'm in Texas. Yep. 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 San Antonio. Yeah. In the airport. Yep. Yeah. We yep. need to get together and have lunch we or something. So. We definitely need to. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I would love to uh, mastermind together with you. Uh, yeah. and, uh, if I can definitely be of help and, and uh, return the favor and, and be a, a special guest on any mastermind, you let me know. I would love that. I'm going to take you up on that. This call was fire. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, I definitely uh, uh, just want to wish you uh, a happy holidays to everybody. Uh, yeah. Lisa, thanks so much for everything that you're doing. You're so inspiring. I love your story. Uh, and I definitely know you motivated a lot of us here today. Uh, I hope so. Y'all just, just, you know, the best Christmas present or holiday present you can give yourself is to not to quit. Just yep. don't quit. You there know, you reach out to your upline, reach out to anybody. Don't Love quit. It. 